Go. Good afternoon. It's Jim uh, with Becky behind the camera. Together we are With It Retirees in Beaverton, Oregon. So it's a, a typical winter afternoon here in Beaverton and uh, I was going to film a little later but I had some came up in the greenhouse that I wanted to show you. So we'll go with it. Uh, the story starts about several weeks ago. I started a batch of uh, black king pearl mushrooms uh, from a liquid culture uh, into a grain spawn and then into the bricks that I make and then eventually in and they grew really fast I should say I thought it was going to be crazy quick and I put them in the blocks and they the mycelium populated the blocks quick and then I put them in my uh, fruiting chamber in the house and nothing happened I waited and waited and waited and waited and used all of my tricks and I couldn't get them to make mushrooms to save my soul. And I was about ready to throw them out and finally I thought out of desperation I'd bring them in the greenhouse. Uh, so I did. <laughs> and, and much to my surprise, what I did actually I should say is I dipped them upside down in the water and then I put them in this uh, back uh, grow bed back here, and if you want to go on back, and I'll show you what they did. Uh, so here they are. They they pinned and made mushrooms almost immediately, which is kind of crazy. You know, there's nothing here. This is moist, of course. It's a, a, a flow of drain bed. Uh, but anyhow, they they uh, they fruited out into these mushrooms, which are real close to getting ready, and so I figured I'd better film now, or I won't be able to get them. Uh, I should say also that uh, Becky, the other wizard retiree, has got a gig where she's going to go to Disneyland tomorrow, so uh, she's not going to be here. <laughs> so she'll be off playing around for a while, and I'll be here working away. Um, Anyhow, these are black pearls. They're a cross between a, a king mushroom and a regular uh, oyster mushroom. If you see the stems on them, like, like this one here, the stem is going to be almost as big as the uh, mushroom, and you can eat the whole thing. So th there's not just the cap or the base. This You can take this whole clump, cut it up, uh, and uh, eat it, which I will be doing tomorrow. Uh, uh, with steak and asparagus, one of my very favorite things to do. Uh, so anyhow, I thought you ought to see that there's two morals to this story. Moral one is is uh, don't give up, <laughs> I guess, and moral two is uh, if your mushrooms won't pin, maybe they need a change of geography. It might be something you could try. Put them outside and see what they do. Uh, anyhow, while I was filming this, I was or thinking about it and looking at them, I noticed this water here that runs in constantly, 24-7, uh, 24 hours a day, in each one of these grow beds, and you, see, you don't see it going anywhere. So I thought people might be interested in how it leaves here and gets back to where it goes. So uh, let's come back over here and we'll start the story. This, uh, this we refer to as a sump. Uh, in, in many uh, aquaponic systems, it would also be a fish tank. Here it's just a sump. You remember two things about the sump, and don't ever forget them in aquaponic. Thing number one, the sump is at the bottom, lower than everything else, because everything got to drain into it. That's number one thing to remember. Number two, the sump is almost always where you put the pump. So if you look down in there, You'll see there's a, uh, a 3,100 gallon an hour pump, and the flexible hose is coming out of it. That's where it's pumping. So uh, you don't really get 3,100 gallons an hour by the time you pump to the top of the top tank. But I'm not going to do the math. So basically, that th that pump is pumping into this little header right here that has four valves coming out of it, and I can adjust those four valves. So these three valves will deal with first. These valves lead to a pipe at one to each one of these fish tanks. One here, one here, and one here. 
and they're constantly running into those tanks 24-7, 24 hours a day. So what happens when the water gets up to the level where it, whoa, look out, the fish just came awake. <laughs> they're supposed to be hibernating. Now they're hungry all of a sudden. Uh, it flows out that drain, comes around this pipe, and flows back, guess where, into the sump. So all three of these tanks do that. Now, one reason they're rigged this way is because if this pump starts pumping or stops pumping, for any reason whatsoever, the water is only going to get down to where it won't flow out of there anymore. It will not drain the tank. So that's a safety precaution. You can't drain the tank on these things, and that's the way you should always set them up, I think, if you've got fish in them. Uh, so anyhow, that's how this half works, and it just keeps doing that. So, now let's look at the uh, fourth valve, which is this one here. By the way, another important thing, uh, these are ball valves. You can tell by the way that this setup thing here, uh, as opposed to a, a, to a crank valve like you would have on a hose. So if this valve is turned this way against the pipe, it's shut, it's closed. If it's turned this way, parallel to the pipe, it's fully open. If it's like this, it's somewhere in between, which is what this one is. So you can always tell from a distance, this pipe down here, the valve is fully open. You can see it. If it was turned the other way, you could see it that way, too. A good reason to use ball valves. So this water runs around here. <coughs> and it comes up to this other little header here that's got teeth running off it too. And these also have ball valves. So each one of these grow beds has its own pipe with its own valve and it never stops running. Now the trick is, and I'm not gonna show you exactly how these work today, it's kinda gonna be on another one, is, is when these beds fill up to just below the line of the balls, there's a uh, tube in there. The water comes over the top of the tube and we form a siphon and it drains the whole thing out in very quick order. At the bottom of this is what they call a bulkhead fitting. And you can see one right here that goes through the, so this has got a plug in it is why it's here, but, but basically it lets you have liquid go through it a wall like that. This is a Schedule 80 bulkhead fitting. If you're going to buy bulkhead fittings, get Schedule 80, not Schedule 40. You'll be sorry if you don't. They have much better surface for making them not leak. Uh, so anyhow, when it gets to there, it flows out the bottom through these pipes in a siphon, and it goes this way. And then the trick is, it comes under here, and it just flows in there when they decide to flow. I just filled this up, by the way. I don't normally have it quite that full. So they fire randomly. When they're ready to go, they just fill it, and then, of course, the whole thing works back again. So that's briefly how it works. Anyhow, uh, we will talk to you guys a little later in the spring uh, uh, about what I'm not just sure. We'll Oh, by the way, if you get a chance and you like this, uh, do hit uh, like and possibly subscribe. It would help us a lot. Uh, anyhow, we'll see you next time.